Hello, this is Victor. I'm here with a new unboxing of a review to a product. So this time we're going to make a look to Warhammer Underworld's Harrow Deep. So this is the core set uh, for the season five of this game. Okay, they have been one season every year more or less, a little bit of delay during the COVID times. But this is the season five where we are going to have the uh, this is Tom Cash Eternals fighting against destruction. So this in Europe is costing 80 euros uh, retail cost. And no, well, I have already opened and I will make a look to you. I did not have time to read all the rules, all the news. I will do another video explaining all the new rules because there are some changes. There are some changes on this season uh, 5. But in that case, I just want to focus for people that is new to the hobby and want to know what you have in this starters, in this uh, corset. Okay, so let's move. So, the of course, the it's coming with the rule book. Okay, so it cannot be in, in, in a different way. Uh, where we have a little bit of introduction background, so you will see here the content. Uh, we have about uh, yeah, seven pages or something like that about the the background and then the rest are rules so it's quite the, this this rules of uh, this game is becoming um, uh, have more layers of rules than before so they're creating more and more layers of rules I think it's still is quite easy to play and not too over complex but yeah you have here a little bit of the background what's going on okay with a very thematic uh, book with, and then we start having well, the typical thing, right? So what are the uh, the objective of the game? What are the, the the components that you have in the core set? Um, yeah, what what the miniatures? So here you have for example of the miniatures painted. They don't come painted, of course. Uh, we have a selection of what are the cars, how the traits, the decks, so all the rules that you need to play. Okay, the different type of cars, how they look. Or you have to set up the terrain so I will not go all the rules but here you have it's a nice book full color I think quite well explained um, yeah we have a new a, a new rule that is called a stagger that is new from this we have counters so we, we, there is a lot of things here uh, all the explanation all the main words so what they mean and here we have Cliff and, and snare were existing reviews. It's a new terminology, but this was existing before. A sighting was existing, and stagger is a new concept that it comes in this book. We have, uh, yeah, we have a lot of yeah, how, how, how all this place. Okay, here we have reactions and phase, and then there is also the rules to play uh, multi to have multiplayers. Okay. So it's quite. It's, the, here you have all the rules that you need for this game, and then this is very interesting. This is the glossary at the end of the rule book, and uh, yeah, a picture of the different boards. Which you, you can know the name of the boards because each board has a name, and for competition you have to know the names because not all the boards are allowed in all the uh, gaming levels. And then at the back of the book we have the reference table. Well, we have it's a very short summary, but this is the most uh, important thing to to memorize is how the combat sequence works. It's a, maybe the most tricky part of the game, but okay. So here we have the rule book. As I said, it comes with two boards. Okay, normally you have to play with two boards. So this is one, and they are both double sided, and the artwork is quite nice. Okay, and all of them uh, are showing different challenges. So they have two, we have one with three lethal hexagons. This one have two block hexagons. Okay, this is block hexagon, and then we have one with lethal and cover. Cover is a new thing in Harudip, so it was not existing before. And then we have one that have nothing, just the starter hexagons. Okay, and we have two boards with the tokens. Okay, so this is the uh, the glory tokens. These are the guard. On the other side, we have the starred. We have um, just random tokens. So it's good because they normally they used to be only wound tokens in the past. 
Now there are wound tokens and on the other side there are just a random token that to be used for any ability that you can have in your warband. We have the torn tokens, these are the torn tokens, the purple ones here, and we have the, the, the action token. So all the thing, the, the objective, the lethal hexagon that you can put on top, and here we have as well the other objectives. So these are two, the two boards are slightly different in printing. So they have the same layout, but they have a different printing. And I think you should have enough tokens to play the game on this box. Okay, and then we, well, if you were buying the game um, at this at the launch in the game workshop, you were also having the objective in these acrylic tokens that are very nice, but I don't think these are available. The only thing is, uh, some of them, you can see the paint have been... Yeah, they, I don't know how much they will be protected against rubbing. Uh, because you can see this one, I don't know if it's visible, but it's scratched a little bit. So, and it has some some parts where the paint is a little bit is, uh, damaged. But they are nice tokens. And, yeah, and the only thing is if you have to put them upside down, Okay, you have to be sure that you cannot distinguish them. So this one, for example, have white markings. Okay, this with white markings is the nine, so it's not too much. It's not too use. Okay, only when it's multiplayer. So, but these are these are the uh, tokens. Okay, so these are different tokens that we have for the game. And some of them are the just the lethal tokens that they are the same from both sides. Okay, so this is what we have here. This. Then we have three, four decks on this on this box. Okay, we have this first deck that is um, all the cards for the uh, Shandarais um, Truth Seekers Warband deck. Let me just zoom in. No, the other way around. Okay, okay, we have. Okay, we have this deck, and um, we have of course the the four characters that come with the deck, and then we have the specific um, power cards for them, so the gambits and the, the specific gambits for each of them, and then we have the specific upgrades for them. So normally what you have is uh, all these decks, normally they have 10 um, gambits, 10 upgrades, and we have 12 objectives, if I'm not wrong. Okay. And um, all these cards can only be used for this warman. So these are the specific warman. So in, in Warhammer Underworlds, you have, um, we'll have three types of cards. We'll have the generic cards, we'll have the faction cards, and we have the warman cards, okay? The warman cards can only be used by the warman. Um, you can see that they, uh, this card, uh, this was the protecting card that goes on top, and it was damaged. And this one was a little bit damaged, not too much, and, and it's because inside they come with the miniatures, and I think they have not put their correct layout because these cards were really uh, damaged by the uh, miniatures that go inside. Okay, but you can see that they are. Yeah, we have all the cards here. They have changed as well the back, but it's something that is annoying. I mean, a little bit because now we have a different back on the cards. So okay, they have changed how the cards. So this means that if you want to mix two seasons or different seasons, you will need to use um, opaque sleeves at the back. Okay, you will need to, uh, opaque sleeves because they have a different back, depending, uh, uh, so they have changed the back of the car. So these are, the gold back is the the objectives and the um, grayish back is the, are the gambits and upgrades, so are the power cars, okay? This is one. Then we have a deck for the other war one that is coming in the in the book, and you can see the back is, is the same back, but uh, as the other one, but they have changed it. Uh, this war one have nine miniatures, okay? So we have here the the, the five mi and this, and then we have of course the non-inspired and inspired side of the cars, of course, okay? that all all the other cars. Uh, this war one again we have here all the, all the gambits and and grades for the warband and we have as well the different objectives okay so and you know the one the first warband was a little bit um, a mix of control and combat they have a very good um, combat guys as well uh, this war, uh, warband will have you will have some guys that are very weak 
with two, three wounds, and then you have the boss with five wounds, that is a lot, and, a, and another guy with four wounds, that is also quite important, with a good defense of one shield, uh, yeah, and what they win, so when they inspire, so they are winning three, one, four, four, this one is winning movement, and I guess it's nine, it's, and, and, and Ser and Grevius is the same, okay, and how they get inspired, the one, the previous ones got inspired if one of the warband dies, that is not the eagle, and this one is the three or more uh, enemy fighters are out of action, or after an attack action in which support uh, supports or is supported, or after an attack action in which this fighter supports or is supported, okay. Okay, so you only have to do an attack action with a support or being supported, it's not that difficult. All of them have the same. But here you inspire one by one and the other one have an activation that it, uh, uh, inspires all at once. So, as I said, each warband will ha have different mechanisms to inspire. To inspire, uh, And these are the, the specific, you can know that this symbol here means it's specific for this warband, okay? Because you will have the same symbol here on top. So this is how you recognize uh, how um, each warband have their uh, cards. Then we have another deck here. That is a, these are universal cards, okay, and this is, if I'm not wrong, is 20, 20, and 20, okay, so these are 60 cards, yeah, it's 20, 20, and 20, so we have 20, and uh, let me see, no, they don't put it here, let me, I will confirm for you, but if I'm not wrong, there are 60 universal cards, let me go here, they don't specify here, neither. Okay, they don't put it neither on, on the summary of the rules, but it should be uh, 60 cars, okay, if I'm not wrong. So we have um, a universal gambit ploys or spells, so uh, these are the 20 gambits, okay. Um, we have new mechanisms, we have new keywords like minion, assassin, uh, that is, uh, can be that some cars are specific for this, brawler. Okay, so we have new new type of um, characters. I think that we will have more and more and more. We used to have only uh, hunter and quarry, and now we have hunter, quarry, assassin, minion, and brawler, as far as I know. And I don't know if we will have more uh, type of keywords in the future. But you can see we have them as well. Upgrades for yeah, this has, looks like an upgrade for beasts or something like that. I don't know. So we have. We have different upgrades as well. I ha I didn't have time to go through all of them. Okay, and you can see the artwork. They have changed. Another thing I wanted to comment. They have changed. As you can see the layout. So now the number of the card is here. Very easy to read. Very big. This is the 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 how it's called this the season or the, the the set that it belongs. Okay. So each set, each deck will have a different symbol here. So Harrow Deep will have this symbol. And if they put an expansion, we'll have a different symbol, so they change the symbol. Uh, this is telling you that it's a ploy, uh, also it's explained here, Gambit ploy. This is telling you that it's generic, and here we have the description, okay? And this collection will have, this Harrow Deep collection will have 308 cards, okay? Because some will come in the next expansions, okay? And then we have here all the generic objectives. And I can see the artwork is very nice. They have changed a lot the artwork from the first season. I think now the artwork is really... Uh, I like it a lot. You can have pictures for all the different warbands that they have released uh, up to now. So each time we have more and more different um, factions in this artwork. And then, finally, we go to the... Uh, what is this is new from this season is the Grand Alliance card decks. And what it means that you will have cards specific for each Grand Alliance. And we have three, gambit, uh, three gambits for each alliance. Okay, so this means 12. We have three gambits, uh, three upgrades for each alliance, and three objectives. So it's 12, 12, and 12. Uh, 36 cards in total in this deck, okay? Um, and um, this can be used, so you have inside a list of what, um, um, these are, you can go to website, what means to be order, this is order, this means destruction, okay? This means um, death, and this means Chaos and this was into this so the and so chaos ones can take these cards, um, death can take these cards and there are some interesting I like a lot this one so there are quite some good ones, 
Um, and this was it to leaders. Okay, no one realizing you only can, you can raise some leaders here with one wound left. So, but this can be enough to change. So this is a really powerful card, um, and this is also quite interesting. So here we have all the cards for the faction, and now we go to the last part of the game. That are the miniatures. So it comes the, the the game comes with these instructions to assemble your miniatures. Uh, I assemble them so I can show you how they look like assembled and without painting. Okay. So these are the first stone cast eternals. Okay, stone cast eternals. The warband is called here. How it's called the Shandars uh, Thunders uh, Tooth Seekers. Sorry, then Shandars Tooth Seekers. This is she is the leader. Okay, the lady with a lantern on top. Uh, this was quite easy to assemble, no problems. Uh, I just push it. Uh, I think the gaps are nicely adjusted. It can be adjusted a little bit more, but once you paint, I can really simulate the ones. So they assemble this one assemble very nicely. Uh, this one also not difficult to assemble. The eagle. Um, I like how it's positioned next to this. Um, a lock. I think it's a nice miniature. This guy is the one that it cost me. Uh, it was more difficult for me to assemble, and I had to glue it. Okay, because it came with um, one pin broken. Okay, so because the pin was broken, so I need to I need to really um, glue it. Um, the only difficulty part was to put some of the bottom because it was uh, yeah it's it was tricky. Um, is the one that cost me a little bit more, and they are not glued to the base, so I can because to to paint is better to sometimes to remove a little bit from the base to be to have access to this part on the bottom. Um, but overall, it's a nice miniature as well. All of them come with this dark blue. And then we have the archer. The archer have to be very careful when you assemble how you push it because it's very easy to break some parts. But you can see, it's really nice miniature as well. And goes like that, okay? So here we have the archer. Okay, and this was not, not only to be careful when you put the bow, that you don't damage the bow, okay? And then we have then we have here the other warband, the orcs or the what it's called the cunning crew. Okay, these are the new type of orcs. This is the leader that goes with the head and this is going to be a paint to paint. I don't know how I will paint this thing. I, I did not assemble them. You can remove and maybe you have to paint the head before um, putting this together. I just wanted to put together so you can see. But this head here, you need to remove the, this part to be able to paint because it's going to be it's going to be really difficult to paint. Uh, very easy to assemble. Just to be careful not to uh, not to uh, damage anything as well. Uh, this uh, this was uh, one much easier to assemble. This one is also very nice. I like it a lot. Again, uh, a lot of layers, so there can be some parts a little bit tricky to access. I recommend maybe to prime these ones in black if you don't want to, because yeah, it's going to be difficult to access the that inside. So I'm thinking if I will need to unassemble them to be able to um, to access some parts. Be careful because when you unassemble them, sometimes it can be broken. This is uh, the goblin. Again, then we have the two minions. Okay, the two small goblins. These are nice. And then, just to finalize, we have these dice. They are a nice size dice. I like it a lot. Uh, I I I love this type of dice. Uh, these dices and, and you don't need to buy your specific faction dices. I think these ones are good enough for the game, so you don't need the special hand dices. Um, and that's all. So this all the content on this Harold Deep um, um, core set. So I hope you have enjoyed this one video. I hope now this clarifies you what is inside, what you can expect from this um, core set. Um, all in all, I like it. The meters are nice. Uh, we have a new season coming on and I'm really enjoying uh, Warhammer Underworlds. So that's all for now, so please give a like if you have liked this video, share if you think other people can be interested, and as usual, thanks a lot for watching, and see you again later. Bye!